Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com free site, DwyerVIP.com free site. Today is February the 22nd, 2018. Let's talk about Badu Jack against Adonis Stevenson. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now first, let me say my plans have changed. Right, in the coming days, I was literally planning on doing the casino equivalent of a bank robbery. In broad daylight, with the cameras running, I was gonna walk in the front door of a casino and I was going to walk out later, hopefully with some cash, right? Because I really did think that the Jurgen Bramer, Callum Smith fight was going to be an opportunity to get better than four to one odds, right? Let me just say, you know that movie, I believe it won Best Picture here in the United States, No Country for Old Men. Well, I viewed this fight as no boxing match for young men, right? Bramer simply put just too advanced for Callum Smith. I just didn't think Callum Smith was going to have a clue what to do with Bramer in the middle of the ring. I didn't think Callum Smith looked that good in round five against Eric Skoklin, right? Go back and revisit that. I thought if you got Callum Smith on his back foot, things fell apart. Well, let's just say if you're looking for an analogous fight, in my opinion, involving a big time puncher, right? Pound for pound, at least as big a puncher as Callum Smith, who at the time of the fight insisted on giving away his height and leaning forward, right? Over his shoes and trying to engage, trying to get by on that big punch against a crafty southpaw. I want people to revisit Vladimir Klitschko against Corey Sanders, right? I thought the Bramer fight was going to play out the same way. I know Smith is unbeaten. Gambling's about taking chances. I thought there was a chance at a stoppage. Don't get me wrong. At greater than 4-1 to odds, I wouldn't have been crying if Bramer fighting the fight in Germany won the fight by decision, right? I'd have been happy there too. Let's just say I won't get that chance. One of the problems, and it is a big problem, in betting on older fighters is that these guys know their body, they know their chances are running out, they know they cannot afford another loss. And so if anything is wrong, right? They're saying there's an infection here and stuff like that. If there's a really sore tendon someplace, if that knuckle, and fighters have sore hands, if that knuckle that's a problem knuckle is really giving you a knuckle before this fight and you don't think you're going to be able to do certain things, and fighters are hurt most of the time, they know it, then you're going to say, look, I'm not 100% ready for this fight. Understand, if Callum Smith goes on and wins the WBSS, Right? Bramer can always say, look, player, you know, come fight me. Understand, <laughs> the fight apparently sold so well that they're bringing in a replacement for Bramer. In other words, the crowd's there, the money's there. Right? I know they're calling it a tournament. Don't fool yourself. This is the entertainment business. Right? If the crowd wasn't there for this upcoming Callum Smith fight, it would get pushed back. They would accommodate Bramer. So my point is, Bramer is a guy who's been around a long time, whoever wins the WBSS, is going to have Bramer on the short list of credible opponents. Understand, these, you know, boxing networks, they want credible fights. And fighters have egos. They hear that a guy's in his late 30s, that guy's on the short list. Better to fight him than some guy in their early 20s. So keep an eye on the possibility of a Bramer, Callum Smith fight taking place down the road. When it does, I'm going to show up early. I'm going to be on camera at some casino. 
And I'm going to be trying to do a heist in broad daylight. Now let's talk about a fight I consider a trap fight. Right? Unification match at light heavyweight between Badu Jack. He's younger than Adonis Stevenson. He hits hard. He beat George Gross. Right? He comes to light heavy. He takes Nathan Cleverly's title. Right? This is a guy who's looking good. Right? This is a guy who gets a draw with James DeGale. He's fighting tough opponents. Right? Understand. <laughs> he's, he's fighting guys like Groves who have a belt. Cleverly had a belt at the time of the match. Right? DeGale had a belt at the time of the match. He's fighting champions. And he's looking good. Cleverly comes after him on his front foot. Badu Jack returns fire. Cleverly wilts. So I know people are looking at the Adonis Stevenson resume, right? And you're noticing not a lot of fights. After a while, you start to say to yourself, gee, how could this level of inactivity and then fights against these guys satisfy the requirements of fighting mandatory contenders so that you qualify for keeping your title. Let me just say, many people in boxing are wondering how Adonis Stevenson on this resume has kept his title all of those years. Now, all of that said, and I know, <laughs> I know there are times here online where I sound like a, a crackpot and that's all good. I'll take the risk. Hell, I'm betting my money, right? All of that said, just understand, life's unfair. It really is. Right? Let's, let's just be real here. Life's unfair. Some guys just have gifts. Right? That 98 mile an hour fastball. Guy doesn't need to know how to pitch if he has a major league level fastball that he can pinpoint. Right now, Stevenson has a gift that's hard to explain. Let's just say it's rare, right? It's very rare. It's ring coverage married to an A-plus punch, right? Folks, when you're blessed with a gift like this, Good things happen to you even when you don't know how to box that well deep in the pocket. Right? Let me just name a couple of guys who have the A+. Plus. This isn't just very good. This is elite level power and suddenness from distance. Manny Pacquiao. His straight left. By the way, Pacquiao is the best analogy in my opinion to Adonis Stevenson, because Stevenson's a southpaw, like Pacquiao, right? Pacquiao's a guy who can fight a very skilled boxer in the pocket, like Chris Algieri. And Pacquiao, from distance, can get off a straight left that's so sudden that an Algieri then starts hitting the canvas with regularity. Right? Warrior, Shane Mosley, is fighting Manny Pacquiao. Mosley, in interviews after that fight, said he'd never been hit like that before in his life. Right? Pacquiao drops Mosley. Mosley, who's in the pocket against prime Oscar De La Hoya, against Antonio Margarito, right? Mosley, a fighter's fighter is on his back foot the rest of the fight, right? If Stevenson were a righty, he'd be Deontay Wilder, same type thing, right? Wilder isn't even close enough to you 
for you to touch his body. And let's face it, some wilder KOs are downright scary. Right? Arthur Spielka. Man, I'm glad that guy was able to open his eyes after hitting the canvas against Wilder. Right? Remains to Vern. Gets hit so hard that he's hit on the chin and he complains to the referee that he was hit in the back of the head. His brain must have hit the back of his head that hard. So, you have a skilled technician guy who's very good in the pocket, Tony Bellew, revisit that fight from several years ago, fighting Adonis Stevenson, let me just say, Stevenson is savvy, he does know how to box, right, he's savvier in my opinion than Deontay Wilder, right, I believe Stevenson makes adjustments and has certain eccentricities that make him more unique than Manny Pacquiao, right? So against Tony Bellew, and that's the fight I want folks to focus on and drawing analogies to his fight against Badu Jack. Against Tony Bellew, who's very skillful in the pocket. Look at the Nathan Cleverly rematch. You'll notice that Stevenson comes out Makes his southpaw stance an issue. Doesn't even throw jabs at times. Just has his hand up like this. You think you're watching a kung fu movie. Right? He's coming in at a half profile. So a good body puncher like Tony Bellew already only has half of the body to work with. Because you can't hit a fighter legally in the back. Once Stevenson starts landing that A+, plus, it's not B+, plus, folks. I think it's better than A. It's one of boxing's best punches. Once Stevenson starts landing that straight left hand, the fight is over. Every time Bellew gets hit with the punch, he freezes in a way we haven't seen Bellew freeze at cruiserweight. But more importantly, Bellew never gets the opportunity to stay in the pocket against Stevenson, to work Stevenson's body. Right? The kind of fighter who bothers Stevenson is Andres Fonfara, a guy who's a bit athletic who actually moves with you. Right? Revisit Andres Fonfara against Stevenson. You're going to notice Stevenson wasn't able to create space in that fight like he likes to. But understand, Badu Jack doesn't move like Andres Fonfara. Right? Badu Jack is a guy who likes being in the pocket. He doesn't move that much. The mistake Groves made the mistake cleverly made was that these guys decided to fight Badu Jack in the pocket. Right? Stevenson savvy. Stevenson also has a punch as good as those other guys punch. That's better than anything Badu Jack, who's heavy handed, can throw. Right? It's better than anything Nathan Cleverly can throw. It's better than anything George Groves can throw. Understand, while Stevenson might not be as savvy in the pocket as Badu Jack, he doesn't have to be in the pocket against Badu Jack. He can be outside. Let me also say, too, that Bellew did an interesting thing because Bellew figured out <laughs> that Stevenson likes to have his opponent lead. Right? Stevenson wants you to think you're fighting an old man and to go looking for him. That's when Stevenson, who has much better feet than advertise, can then jump to a spot, turn, and hit you with a straight left hand. 
that's going to change the fight. Right? So, Badu Jack, I feel, is not going to be prepared for Stevenson's full ring game. Right? Stevenson is savvy enough to rarely be caught up on the ropes. Stevenson knows spacing. Stevenson also understands that his straight left really can't be matched in the sport outside of prime Manny Pacquiao. Right? Other guys throw hard. Don't get me wrong. Right? Golovkin hits like a Mack truck. But with Golovkin, you see, you hear the thunder before the lightning. Right? That's how I'll put it. With Golovkin, you see him coming up to you. You know it's about to go down. With Pacquiao, when he's on his game, when he has room to operate, when he's not getting smothered by Jeff Horn, and a lot of that fight had to do with Horn's ability to smother Manny Pacquiao. When Pacquiao's not getting smothered, when Adonis Stevenson is in against an opponent who doesn't have the foot speed to smother him and who can't match him from distance, that opponent's in a lot of trouble. Now, I want people to also look at the Badu Jack Derek Edwards film. Badu Jack dropped multiple times, multiple times in the first round. This is a few years ago, right? But that film's up here on YouTube. Just understand, Badu Jack is a guy who has been rung up by heavy artillery and was unable to recover, right? Now, I know... When he's in against a Nathan Cleverly and he knows that high volume's coming back, he can brace himself. When his opponent's in the pocket, coming after him, he can brace himself. He can tighten those neck muscles. He can do things to take the punch. He's not that good at taking the punch from distance, is he? Right? Understand, against Adonis Stevenson, opponents have a very small margin of error. The bet I like here, and I know Stevenson's older, but did you know Badu Jack's 34 years old? The bet I like here, and power is the last to go, and Stevenson is a master in his construct. The bet I like here is Adonis Stevenson to win the fight. Right? I think there's a distinct possibility, distinct, of a stoppage. Now, I know many will disagree with what I have to say next. But Badu Jack, who went the distance with George Groves, who went the distance with James DeGale, who got a draw with DeGale, right? in my opinion, Badu Jack, Beats George Groves on the scorecards. Badu Jack's only chance of winning this fight is a puncher's chance. Right? In my opinion, Badu Jack can only win this fight by KO. The bet I like is Adonis Stevenson to win the fight. Sprinkle a little bit on Adonis by KO. Right? Also have Adonis to win by decision. Hedged with Badu Jack by KO. Right? If the odds don't allow that play, then what you want to fool around with is Adonis Stevenson to win hedged with the under. Another way to play it would be to take both guys by stoppage. Because I do feel Stevenson is going to land some straight lefts on Badu Jack. And I'm not sure if Badu Jack has been hit like that since 
the Derek Edwards fight in which he was stopped early. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Don't fall into the trap of saying Jack didn't look bad against the Gale. Jack didn't look bad against George Groves. Jack took Cleverly's title. Right? Hell, three fights, the Gale, Groves, and Cleverly, and Jack gets a draw and two wins. He's younger than Stevenson, who doesn't seem to be fighting anyone lately. Stevenson, several years older. Uh, Jack's going to take this. Right, folks? Sometimes boxing's illogical. It's rock, paper, scissors. Jack is an in-the-pocket fighter fighting a full ring fighter who has better legs, more suddenness, and ring coverage. The ability to deliver A-plus power punches suddenly from distance. I like Stevenson. I expect him to win the fight. I'll hedge the play with Jack by KO. That's how I see it. Understand the risk involved. If the fight goes the distance, as Jack's fights against the Gale and Groves did, and if Jack wins a decision, as he did against George Groves, you lose it all. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your thoughts in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.